maybe it's time for you to get another friend group or to stop, you yeah. know, going to, to margarita night right after work and just hanging out and like venting about the husbands or the wives or whatever it is mm-hmm. and do something different. Right. It's going to invest in your marriage. Hey friends, welcome back to Fridays with Dave and Ashley here on the Exo Marriage YouTube channel where you get real marriage advice from real people. And we've got a great video for you today. It's actually a clip from what's been one of our most popular podcast episodes of the year. It's gotten a lot of people talking and we think it could really help you. So sweetie, tell them what it is. That's right. It's all on communication. It's called the power of your words. So check it out. I want to share a few uh, Bible verses on this. Um, Ashley and I have been doing a message on the power of your words. And we've collected some scriptures that speak to this. And I just want to share a few to sort of set the tone because the Bible has a lot to say about the power of our words. And I Mm -hmm. think sometimes we we neglect this. We think, what's the big deal? Sticks and stones can break my, ho- my bones, but words can never hurt me. But the truth is, words have power. I mean, think about it. God created the universe with words. He could have created it any way he wanted, but he used words. Then he created us in his image, giving us power in our words to shape the world around us for good or bad, to build up or to tear down. And we've yeah. got to be so careful. So here are a few verses. Proverbs eighteen twenty one: The tongue can bring death or life. Your words have the power of life and death. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 12. I tell you, everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. Mm. For by your words, you will be acquitted, and by your words, you will be condemned. Man, that's sobering for me because I've said some empty words. I've said some harsh things. And we thankfully in Christ, we have grace and we don't have to beat ourselves up and live in shame over our past mistakes. We can embrace his grace and live in freedom. But that verse should still be a sobering wake-up call that our words matter. And if we've said things we shouldn't have, then we need to apologize and we need to try to make it right. Here are a few more. Um, Proverbs, again, chapter 16, verse 24. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, healthy for the body. I love this from Ephesians chapter 4. Get rid of all bitterness, anger, rage, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. And there are, there's so many more. I mean, Mm -hmm. we could go on and on and on, but it comes down to to respect, kindness, tenderness, honesty. And if our words aren't displaying that about our spouse, then we're speaking negative things into existence. We're tearing down our marriage with our words. And if we're letting others speak negatively about our spouse, Mm -hmm. we're talking about that as well, um, then we're also culpable. You know, we're, yeah. we're, we're letting that happen. And we've got to make sure that those words are just not allowed in our home, about our spouse, in anywhere. It's never appropriate to speak evil and negativity about your spouse. You know, absolutely. And I, I just want to camp out real quick on, because I, f- I feel like these go hand in hand, these two behaviors, you know, both talking badly about your spouse and letting others talk badly about your spouse because one affects the other. And here's why. So if you, like, let's say you have a group of friends and they tend to talk maybe negatively about their spouses. And then also, you know, in this conversation of them talking negatively about their spouse, they kind of, you know, say something derogatory about your spouse because they think, oh, we're just friends. We've known each other a long time. We're just shooting the breeze. You know, we're letting it out. We need to have a safe place to, to just, you know, let it all out. But do you guys know that actually studies have shown, there's literal studies that have shown that you kind of justifying speaking negatively about something to vent that venting itself actually just leads to more anger. And that's actually biblical, but our friend Shanti Feldhahn, I actually just heard her do a talk on this. It was actually about kindness and the power of kind words. And she said that, you know, there's all this research behind, well, does venting actually work? And it, it doesn't, it literally is like you're taking a match and you're just lighting a line of gasoline. Like maybe you've been making a line of gasoline this whole time with like negative words, negative words, negative words. And the more, event and you especially when you get among people it's like you all play off each other and we play off each other I'm not just saying you I mean we've done this too like I get it I've been that person I've had to learn the hard way but it doesn't lead anywhere good and it just lights this fire inside of you of anger that leads to even more negative thoughts and maybe negative things you say about your spouse and so I would just challenge you if you are around people that have traditionally, like in the past, been talking badly about your spouse, the next time they do that, you need to speak up. 
Like it is so yes. important that you speak up and you say, listen, it's, I want, you know, forgive me for allowing this to be okay, because it's not even your fault. Like I'm the husband here. I'm the wife here. And I've not said anything in the past about you speaking about badly about my spouse. But listen, I've been really convicted over this. And I, the more I thought about it, the more I realized I don't want my spouse, you know, talking badly to other people about me or allowing other people to talk badly about me. And so I want to, I want to change this dynamic here. Let's start saying only positive things because it's just not, it's really not helping me as a spouse. And if that person is really your friend, they're going to say, you know what? Okay. That sounds good. And I'm so sorry that, that this has caused, you know, friction in your marriage because they would be more concerned about your marriage. But if they're like, man, that's stupid or girl, what are you talking about? We're best friends and we can just say whatever. Then that's not really a good friend. You guys, it's not a good friend. They're wanting permission to, they don't want to change venting about their spouse and all that. And they don't want to be held accountable. And so they, you just have to be mindful. Mm -hmm. And maybe like Ashley said, maybe it's time for you to get another friend group or to stop, you know, going to, to Margarita night right after work and just hanging out and like venting about the husbands or the wives or whatever it is Mm -hmm. and do something different. Right. It's going to invest in your marriage. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch that. If you discuss that with your spouse and apply those principles to your marriage, I really think it can make a dramatic difference in your communication. And better communication leads to better marriage, and really every aspect of your marriage will benefit as a result. So for more great marriage tips, subscribe here to the Exo Marriage YouTube channel and check out all of our episodes on the Naked Marriage Podcast. Bye, guys. Bye.